Great. All right. If you could see on your screen there, I don't know if you could see that. No, you can't. You see that there? Okay, no double screens. Got it. Great. Okay, Catalyst is a monthly meeting of leaders uh, that we get together, as you see, and we really just try to spend time with each other and, and develop uh, friendships and kinships and determine how we can, as, as a community of, of uh, servants, work together and really serve our, our community. So, and this is great, be able to spend some time together. Um, first time, I just want to see if there's any first time people here. So, it's really, let's give them a hand. It's really great to have, have all of those there. Um, if it is your first time, I, let's make sure that you fill out, if you don't mind, please. Uh, there's a little uh, sign-in sheet at your table there. It's really important that we want to stay connected with you. And, uh, and take a look at the other materials that are there. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and look at any of our community events that are coming, um, which I'm going to do afterwards. And let me go from here. I'm going to go ahead and op open this up in prayer, okay? Father, we thank you for uh, just a beautiful morning um, and just the opportunity of being able to gather together. We have, an, uh, we have a great topic to talk about this morning. We ask that you bless it, Father, that you just uh, allow us to develop deeper relationships with each other, and that uh, you work in the city through us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's do this right now. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Sergio Lara and Jeff Norman. Would you guys come, come up, please? Give them a hand. <laughs> Two of the finer, good-looking gentlemen in our community. Well, we're here to talk about something uh, that I discovered that's very important going on in our community. And I want to start by telling not the story about father involvement, but a story about Catalyst. And I've been coming to Catalyst for a long time. And one of my little disciplines is every time I come to Catalyst, I want to meet somebody I didn't know. So last August, I came in milling around, and I saw a young guy sitting at a table all by himself. And so I sat down next to him and I introduced myself to him and I found out about what he was involved in, which is father involvement. And I said to myself, that sounds important. And I was in the market for getting involved in something. And so I heard him talk and uh, we got acquainted outside this event. Uh, and that's the beginning of the story. And it culminated in my participation with Sergio and a bunch of other great people in putting on a conference for men that took place last April 1st. And Sergio is going to fill us in. Oh, yeah. So I want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Jeff. Uh, he has been our note taker. Uh, the, we, he spearhead really this conference. Uh, so I don't know how I would have done it. I want to acknowledge everybody in the room that showed up or was planning on showing up but for some reason couldn't. Um, I mean, Jose, uh, too many names to mention. Um, so a little bit about the conference. It was the first conference we held in San Jose County for fathers. We didn't know uh, what it was going to look like, how it was going to turn out, but um, it was really a multicultural conference. We had uh, a, a diverse group of dads. Uh, one of the partners from Child, Child uh, Support, Department of Child Support Services counted uh, around 105. We had 66 uh, people that registered. And um, it was really around telling our stories. Uh, we had uh, Lamar, who you see there, he was a keynote speaker. But we had a moment, time, where da dads got into their respective tables and they had a facil facilitated table talk. And uh, I, I know I saw Peter here, one of the dads at his table, you know, was shedding some tears. And, and so, you know, that, that's all we want to do, create, create and hold spaces for fathers to come in and share. And, and, and some may not be biological fathers, but... They may be raising a, 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 a son or daughter in the community or a niece or maybe a grandfather raising a grandchild. And so we just want to create this, this uh, space for them. And so we know that there's a lot of uh, work, uh, positive work for, for moms in, in the social services sector. And so uh, we're just trying to figure out and learn along with dads uh, as to how they work and how men think and how we can get come together and, and, and create something positive for San Jose County. So... I didn't have much other than that, Joe, and uh, I'm really appreciative of everybody's uh, uh, support. All right, let's give them a hand. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a hand. 
This is some of the cool things that are happening when we're able to get together and get to meet. Um, it is really my pleasure as I begin to think about the opportunity and the privilege of being able to introduce our guests, speakers, uh, that we've been able to spend some time as a result of our relationship here at Catalyst and they have not only become individuals that I esteem greatly and respect and really believe in what they're doing, but I have absolutely fallen um, just in, in, in have such a capacity to love these three guys because of what they're doing. I know their hearts and I know their intentions and boy, do we have a great future because of individuals in our community like them. So I'm gonna ask James Bates, Jose Sabala and Manny Escamilla to come on up and they're gonna go ahead and share with us. <laughs> James, James, James is already telling me what to, so what, what are you gonna do, James? <laughs> you want these two guys first? Oh, Manny's gonna call you up. So take everything I said back. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you got it. All right, how's everybody doing this morning? Good, good, good. You know, one of the uh, most memorable moments that I had while I was in college was, uh, was a time I spent with my first girlfriend away from, away from home in college. Uh, I had met her after my first semester at UC Berkeley. And uh, it was winter vacation, and it was right after Christmas, and we were like, you know what, we ha I haven't seen you in a while. Let's spend some time together. So she said, yeah, why don't you come up to Mountain View, and why don't you come to, to where I work, and we could grab lunch together. And little did I know that she worked here <laughs> at Google. So I uh, went to visit her, stopped by, and uh, I, was I was introduced to this. This was the first thing that I seen. And as I walked up to it, I was completely amazed. It was absolutely incredible. It looked like a spaceship had landed right in the middle of Mountain View. Um, so I walked in, and uh, it seemed like it was like a mall. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, there was free food made by gourmet chefs, uh, all-you-could-eat buffet, and it was completely free. I couldn't believe it, could not believe it. So we sat down and we were talking. I, I seen some of my other friends who were uh, at Berkeley there and we were chatting and they just had a, a winter internship. And then I met some of her, her colleagues and they were working on this amazing project, shooting up hot air, hot air balloons into the sky to shoot down Wi-Fi to remote locations. So as we were talking and I, and I was meeting more and more people, I realized that it was the first time that I had ever met somebody who made six figures. And as we kept walking, she showed me how amazing Google was. There was all of these amazing amenities, uh, nap, place where you could take naps, uh, place where you could rock climb, place where you could bowl and you could, have, and you could play arcades. And as uh, we were walking around, around the complex, I began to think, man, maybe this girl's a little bit out of my league. I don't know what I'm, don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but it was a great experience. And one thing I, I remembered is uh, if she knew where I was from, would she still be with me? I mean, I'm from a, a trailer park. Uh, I grew up in South Modesto to a single mother who struggled to make ends meet. Um, she, she worked many jobs and she struggled on her own with her own personal issues. And we lived on Olivero Road, which was a, a, one, a half a mile strip of, of, of street that was called the Devil Street. By, that was called the Devil Street, I'm sorry. And it was notorious for illegal activity. So notorious, in fact, excuse me, so notorious, in fact, that Modesto B named it this. So as I kept walking and as I kept thinking, I wondered to myself, this is nowhere where I live. How could I bring it? And, and that, that was the inspiration for the Codex program, or one of the inspirations, at least. Codex is a seven-week program that offers high-touch exciting, fun, engaging technological education to middle school students throughout Modesto, California. What we focus on is giving them a foundational understanding to computer science. And in addition, we also expose them to amazing places throughout the Central Valley. We go to college campuses, we visit tech headquarters, we also introduce them to city leaders. Our model is that we select 24 students, 12 boys, 12 girls, all of whom are considered at risk by their schools and we expose them to computer science. 
And the reason why is because of this. We see that there is a huge, huge disparity. And another inspiration for the program was the disparities between the Bay Area and Modesto. It's amazing what a 30-minute drive can do right when you cross over the Altamont. And my belief is that if students do not have access to the essential 21st century skills that are necessary to find work, then poverty will be exacerbated in this area. And this is what Codex, Codex seems to or seeks to do to provide this type of education. And what we truly focus on and one of our models and what we believe in is exposure. Exposure gives a taste to the possibilities. And one of the stories that I like to tell or one of the ways I like to describe exposure is, um, is going to Costco. Uh, when I was younger, I never really went too, much, too often, but, but now uh, I get to go a lot and I truly, truly enjoy walking around because of the free samples, <laughs> you know. And, and what you realize is that when you're walking around these places, they give you a sample and you may not have gone to Costco to buy Texas sausage, but when they give you a minuscule little piece of Texas sausage and you're exposed to the flavor, it gets you thinking that maybe you should buy it. And in the same way with the students, we try to give that same sense of taste and flavor as well. Our hope is that when we work with them, when we take them to, to college campuses, when we take them to college campuses, when we take them to visit Datapath or other tech headquarters, that they believe that they could be there as well, that they could see themselves there as well. Because underexposure, when people are not exposed, prevents people from making good decisions because they have limited information. And the result of that is that they live in a prison of people who, who think like them, dress like them, talk like them. Our belief is that we wanna show them that God has so much more in store than those that they live around and their current living conditions. That is our hope. And this is our traction. And we believe that what computer science can do ranges far beyond what, or ranges far beyond what could be done in the field of tech. It could help other sectors as well. The, 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 the ability to reason logically, systematically, the skills that you learn by, through coding could help any other career path that they choose to go into. And that's the benefit. And we're beginning to see progress in students' performance in school. Not only that, we also see the, the achievements that they've won outside of it. In our, first, in our first summer, we worked with 24 students, and 17 of the 24 did not have a computer at home. And nine months after working with them, they were able to win the Congressional App Challenge. And also, in 2016, we were able to win the Wesley Prize for Top Young Innovation in California. We believe that the Central Valley needs this type of education and it needs to be more accessible. And the industries in the Valley also need to take notice and invest in students to learn so that they could be innov innovatively driven. So one of the things that keeps us going, one of the things that encourages us every day is a story that I like to tell all of the people who work alongside us. And that's the story of Emilio and Jesse who lived in this house. They also lived on Olivero Road. And I remember when I was at MJC, uh, my mother asked me, she said, that Emilio and Jesse needed to be tutored because they were about to fail. Now Emilio and Jesse had built kind of a reputation for themselves on the block. They were kind of the Dennis the Menaces of the street. Whenever they walked past your house, you kind of closed the blinds and ran inside. But I said yes, and, but I said yes reluctantly. So we began tutoring them and we, uh, we studied here in Mi Pueblo. And, and right next to the butchery, there's little, uh, little stools and little tables where we studied because we got free food. So I worked with them and what I realized is that even though they were rough around the edges, they were great kids once you got to know them. So after a couple of months, and once we realized that they were gonna be able to pass on to the next grade, I wanted to celebrate with them. I said, Emilio and Jesse, you've done a great job. Let's go somewhere that you've never been before. Let's do something that you've never done before. Where do you wanna go? And as I said that, I kinda of wanted to take my words back because I thought, I thought they were gonna say something outrageous like Disneyland or Great America or 
Legoland or something like that. But without hesitation, both of them simultaneously said the mall. And I think this is the reality of many students who live in poverty, is that Olivero Road to the mall is less than six miles away. And these were third and sixth graders who had never been there before. Their life was the block. So we hopped on the bus and we went to the mall. And right when we walked in, they, ha- they started hooting and hollering. We, we spent the entire day there. We went into every store. You'd be surprised by how much kids love furniture and they could look at furniture and jump on it and whatnot. But <laughs> nonetheless, one of the most memorable experiences of that day were the escalators. So Emilio and Jesse said that they had never seen escalators in real life. So now imagine these two kids with ice cream around their mouth from just, finish, from just finishing eating Cold Stone, wearing dirty clothes, running to the escalators, stopping to time their first step so, so that they wouldn't fall, grabbing onto the rails for dear life so that they wouldn't fall backwards on each other, and then once they reached the top, running back down to do it all over again. To them, the escalator was their roller coaster. The mall was their Disneyland. And it was a moment that that they would never forget and that I still hear about today. And with the Codex program, this is our goal, is that there are dozens and hundreds of students throughout this city, throughout this county, throughout this region of the Central Valley that are experiencing the same types of things that Emilio and Jesse are. And our belief is that if we could just give them a taste of the possibilities, give, give them a taste of what could happen if they take a step of faith, that it's endless, and that they know that there are people around them that could support them. So my time going to Google, my time with Emilio and Jesse were the inspiration for this program. But inspiration wasn't enough. We also had escalators that, that helped the program expand, and that was James Bates and Jose Sabala and Danny Mauricio. So uh, let's give them a round of applause as they come on up. South Modesto Partnerships aims to uh, gather different sectors to work together in the neighborhood for a need or a possible rise of a program such as Codex. And so sitting in the room um, here at Catalyst is where I met this cool dude. Um, Not knowing who he is, what he does before the even conversation of Manning and myself and different partners in the room had a conversation about Codex. I met James, but I met him right here at this first table, and I remember coming in as my first time here, super nervous, um, had a suit on. I was like, man, this is so professional. This is really cool. This, I'm so nervous. I don't know, it's sweating and everything. Um, and I sat there, and I met James, and I just had a conversation uh, briefly and followed up with him on an email. We had some coffee. Later on down the line, not knowing um, what the Lord had in store, uh, why we met. And so uh, South Modesto Partnerships aims to really provide that space of the strengths of the community. We know that there's so many needs and so many issues that are in South Modesto, but we have some amazing, amazing leaders in South Modesto that we provide that space of infrastructure to help them grow in areas such as Codex. And so that's really our role in, in this this whole program. We were just a launching pad to help connect Manny with this awesome dude and super excited about my dude on the left-hand side. Thanks. Um, I echo uh, Jose's sentiments and it is humbling. It's, it's super cool. Um, I was looking at a video, I thought, God, I was stiff, really stiff three years ago. I gotta loosen up. <laughs> and I wasn't honorary Hispanic then, but uh, um, so it's, it has been, an absolute pleasure and joy, and this is Catalyst at work. Here it is, I wouldn't have had the platform to meet Jose and just sitting there, but it was the intentionality of doing exactly what you guys are doing this morning. You guys are here, you guys came out for the purpose of helping our community, but without a specific agenda, and he said, hey, we wanna get out of our silos and maybe meet some different people, and that is how this worked. 
And the beauty of this is it is truly a cross-sector collaboration. So Jose and I meet. He tells me about this young kid, Manny Escamilla. And I said, okay, as long as he's not crazy, I'll sponsor the first year. And, and through that, then Mr. John Evans said, hey, I want to help out with that. And I said, well, I know some people at Modesto City Schools. Maybe we can use their facility and their lab so we don't have to have a facility that we pay for. And someone said, you know, Red Shield is serving lunch, and we can provide lunch over there. And then Mr. Clark came and got involved. And, and so not only has it been such an amazing, rewarding program, but for me it's humbling, you know, back to what Sergio is talking about as a father. I mean, I feel like I've been a mentor, which is so humbling to say to Manny, and I'm getting so much more out of it. But through that, the friendships and the relationships that have come out from that, Joe, John Britton, Jay Pink, Randy Clark, on and on, Sergio, Danny, Jose, and of course, Manny, have been some of, and are the, some of the closest people in my life, and we're doing this for the good of the community. So thank you guys all for doing what you're doing. And if some crazy IT guy that doesn't know anything about nonprofits can do this, you guys can too. And another huge and emerging part of this story is a young man I want to introduce, Danny Mauricio. Good morning. Um, so I jo uh, joined on court, uh, Codex my first, uh, the first year, uh, the first co cohort, and um, definitely I was able to see the the impact firsthand on how it really tru truly affects the students. Sometimes, um, you know, we go about our days not really knowing exactly what certain programs do, but I was there, you know, to physically see it, you know, and I'm continuously seeing it, you know, uh, now being a, in our third year. Uh, many of the students, you know, first come in, you know, not really knowing what to do, not really understanding what's going on, and not really truly understanding what is Codex. And it's one of those things where, you know, firsthand exposing them to what truly coding is and what the possibilities are out there, you know, with the college tours and stuff like that, uh, they really get excited. They really want to, you know, proceed forward. They really want to continuously be part of the program. They have this desire and this, I would say, hunger to ki kind of continue. Uh, when it comes to a closing, usually every summer, uh, the students are like, you know, are we going to continue? What's next? You know, what is the next step for them? And it's one of those things where truly, you know, working, you know, uh, with Manny and uh, James and Jose Sabala really is great because it's one of those things where we're kind of, it's kind of really tying in to that thing of whole, the whole exposure where we're really showing them what is out there for them. And then they really have that desire, that hunger really like, oh, you know what? That is a possibility I can take. That is something that is out there for me. And I would say, you know, it wouldn't be possible, uh, just like Manny said, you know, the escalators, you know, each one of us is a step for them. Each one of us is that next step for them to kind of reach that goal or reach something new in their lives. So with that, so with that, Thank you so much for all of the support for your time this morning. And I encourage you to go back to your communities, to look for those diamonds in the rough and be an escalator to them, to lift them to their hopes, to their dreams, and to see what God can do in their lives. Thank you so much. All right, there is, um, we've got some table talk. This is your time to find your Codex program. This is your time to find your best friend. This is your time to find your mentor. This is your time to find your dinner date, your lunch date, your coffee break. And I want you guys to read this question that's on the screen. It's a better question this month, so I'm really excited about that. Um, last month was a little difficult. I don't know who picked that one, but uh, uh, <coughs> this question is great. So read it on the screen, um, do some table talk. Find a date for some coffee this afternoon or evening, and let's see what God does.